Over the last month, as world attention is focused on the conflict between Israel and Hamas, terror group ISIS has had free reign in Iraq, killing thousands and ethnically cleansing the country of its Christian and Yazidi communities while raping and abducting young girls. But these headlines are insignificant for the likes of Penelope Cruz and her husband Javier Bardem, along with many other celebrity singers and directors who were quick to condemn Israel for genocide while bringing to attention the vast difference in casualties, 66 for Israel and 1,800 for the Palestinians. But do these two numbers tell the whole story? Do they describe the way in which Hamas uses Palestinian children as shields or hide their operatives and weapons in schools and civilian areas hoping to increase the death toll? Do they tell the story of how many Palestinians themselves now condemn Hamas? They don't. And here's the advice for celebrities using their stardom and platforms to make a political statement. If you don't know the facts, stay quiet. Otherwise, use your voice to address real global calamities. You like numbers? Here are some important ones that are far off your radars. In the three-year-long Syrian civil war, almost 200,000 civilians have been killed, nearly 9 million displaced. Just last month in Afghanistan, 89 were killed by a suicide bomb. And in the Sudan, the war rages on between Muslims and Christians. Two million dead, five million displaced, and tens of thousands subjected to slavery. But the world is silent. Last week, as you were so busy crying Gaza, Gaza, more than 1,700 Syrians were brutally slaughtered by ISIS in over a span of only five days as militants took over yet another gas field. And in case you forgot, ISIS makes $3 million a day in oil sales. More money, more influence more deaths. Is this becoming any clearer or will it take another 9-11 to make the world realize that the threat of extremism is not just directed at Israel but seeks to destroy all of us Christian, Jew, Kurdish, man, woman, free thinker. This is not a ping-pong game or color war between Israel and Hamas a game in which I will be on Team Israel or Team Hamas. This is them against us. It's terrorist against humanist. Which side are you on? And before you answer, think of the past few months. Think of the young Nigerian girls abducted by militants. The Syrians hanged publicly on crucifix as young children watched. The Egyptian Christian Coptic girl shot on her way home from Bible study. The political dissident hanged in Iran. You can call them by many names, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood, Boko Haram, Hezbollah, and even the Iranian regime. But you'd only be fooling yourself if you considered a difference in name as any more of a distinction. We are at war. We are currently in a war of ideology that has bled over borders in the Middle East to Europe, Africa to South America, and yes, right here in the U.S. We are the generation that stays quiet at political corruption, favoring political correctness instead. We pride ourselves in sticking up for the underdog while throwing our friends and allies to the dogs. And then we make arguments based on moral equivalency between a terror group and a sovereign state while closing our eyes to the tragic bloodshed at the hands of merciless terrorists in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. Open your eyes, my friends. We have become the morally equivocated.